This is a posterior view of the skull showing the squamous part of the occipital bone where the nuchal lines are located. Almost in the center is the external occipital protuberance from which a ridge curves convex upwards towards the base of the mastoid process. This is the superior nuchal line. Nuca means the back of the neck. This is a lateral view again showing the external occipital protuberance and the superior nuchal line. The superior nuchal line in specific marks the junction of the neck and scalp. The superior nuchal line is also the surface marking of the attachment of the tentorium cerebelli and the transverse venous sinus on the inside of the skull. The medial third of the line provides attachment for trapezius muscle, while the lateral half provides attachment for sternocleidomastoid muscle. Splenius capitis, which is seen here in the upper part of the floor of the posterior triangle, is inserted into the lateral third of the line, deep to sternocleidomastoid. Above the superior nuchal line is the highest nuchal line. This line is a faint line and often imperceptible in most skulls but it is very prominent in this skull as a variation. The highest nuchal line provides attachment of occipitalis and gallia aponeurotica of occipitofrontalis muscle. Below the superior nuchal line the bone that covers the cerebellar hemispheres gives attachment to muscles at the back of the neck. Halfway between the superior nuchal line and foramen magnum is the inferior nuchal line. It lies concentric with both. The external occipital crest in the midline between the external occipital protuberance and foramen magnum bisects the area and provides attachment for ligamentum nuchi. The area on both sides of the crest the external occipital crest provides attachment for muscles of the back of the neck.